My first question is, um, because you're not using a per se camera bag, no. right? I have a, just a regular backpack, the same one that I'm using to go to the grocery store. I've never been into uh, photography bags. Uh, maybe because it looks too obvious, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel also like the padding is a waste of space. I'm gonna get uh, killed for seeing that. I, I don't have any padding for all of that, no padding at all. <laughs> Not good. All right, so, so we'll start with the cameras because this is what we're here for. I have a pair of Canon R5. I've been shooting with those for over a year now. In each, I have a two terabyte uh, card. <laughs> it's it's huge, but it's just part of my uh, file strategy. Again, something I've been doing for such a long time. I keep everything on the card, and I have a backup uh, on the hard drive. Two terabyte is enough for this five day trip in the woods. If we leave for longer, then I have a second hard drive. I always have two copies at different places. We used to used to travel with up to like three different models of cameras. Yeah. Now you have two of the same. Can you can you uh, elaborate on that? Yeah, so each model, each camera model has buttons at different places. I work in the dark, I work at night, and I need to be able to go very fast with a camera. And it's easy to start to learn how to operate a camera in the dark. But when you have two or three different models, I felt like I was always losing time. So having two of the same, it's easier for me. And especially the R and R5 or the 1DX, you can operate everything in the dark without looking at what you're, uh, at the buttons themselves because there are no dials on the top to go from manual to both. So you can just press button and you see on the screen. So it's very easy to, to operate at night. The L bracket, I uh, just bought a second one for the, the second camera. Um, I don't like having a, a plate, a shoe plate, because it always get, gets loose and that's something that happens every time I'm in a critical situation, like I need a quarter. So um, yeah, I, I like having this because it, it stays there and also I can switch to vertical right away. And this specific one is good because I can still use the, the swivel screen like this. Which is a, a feature that you especially like, right? Yeah, that was not uh, present uh, on most uh, DSLRs. So actually I had the 6D2 for that reason. That was the only reason why I had the 6D2, because of the monitor. But this one has it, so I don't I don't need any other models. And this is great as I'm shooting very low. It's easier for me to do the framing because when the, the monitor was here, like with the camera there, when you're in the water, it's just not easy to, to frame. Yeah, and it also, it gives you um, instant feedback when we're shooting light painting, right? Yeah, so good point. So I turn, the, the, turn it my way like this. So then, from that point of view, I can see if the hard press is working, if, I, if I'm taking the picture, because I have visual feedback from the monitor, which was not possible with the older models like the 5D4. Okay, a bunch of uh, extra batteries, of course. And the lenses that I'm using on this trip, which has been pretty much the same for five years? I think I've been using the same lenses for five years. So 14 millimeters f1.8, that's the one I'm using for the Milky Way light at, late at night. 35 f1.4, 24 f1.4, 85 1.4, and 16 to 35 f4. So that's my only zoom and the 16 to 35 
is the one that I'm using usually to make those videos but as I wanted everything on the table we're filming with a cell phone but the 16 to 35 is really good uh, when you're talking to the camera or filming when driving because of the of the zoom but f4 is really not good for me uh, with the light painting it's good at the beginning but I, I usually don't want to change the lens when I'm shooting so I'm gonna stick to either 14 and 24 or 24 and 35 and I never switch or rarely switch the lens halfway during a photo shoot and then we have the triggers these are the ones that I've been using for seven years now young new something something with the with the cable so that I have two that go on top of each camera and another one in my hand so this one has tape because we don't want to have any lights coming from the trigger itself so I have one in my left hand and one on each camera and one camera is usually filming and the other one is taking pictures and I switch from one to another so I have an extra trigger just for this and then extra batteries for the uh, the triggers I have a sec another one also uh, I have backups of a lot of things uh, in, in another bag but this is what I'm leaving with for for the night the lens wipes of course okay I have two of the same flashlight and I never talk about this one yet in video that was supposed to be the flashlight that solves everything but it doesn't exist anymore it lasted just for a few months actually it's been replaced with another one that is identical but it has a sensor at the front that is making the light go dimmer if it's in your pockets or if it's in a tube yep so that's not good for for us uh, but i have a few of this model that doesn't exist anymore and this is what i'm using now in summer 2022 it's been modified a little bit so i have a copper tube on top that is taped and this is to hold the dimmers and i know it's gonna sound overkill for a lot of people but for me it's making a lot of sense to have a physical dimmer because the flashlight has this crazy cool magnetic switch with this switch I can go from strobe to continuous with with the same remote that is super easy to uh, take on and off okay so the physical dimmer is just a uh, silicone plug in which we uh, punch some mm -hmm. holes so I have a bunch of different ones here and I insert this thing inside the copper tube and then I can have a dimmer light so I start the night with no dimmer and as it gets darker I have to put a dimmer to balance with the light of the background you know that story right if it's new for you just go back to a few episodes and of course I have two I really use these two at the same time but it's mostly a backup one because I had one failing not long ago uh, this doesn't go in the water. It's supposed to be waterproof, but it gets rusty when it goes in the water. I have to investigate what's that thing because it stopped working right away when I went in the water with this a uh, few weeks ago. And of course, uh, I like, I don't have it with me, but uh, I like the magnetic uh, connector for the charging. So it's in the car currently. I just put the flashlight on the dock and it charges by, by itself. And then my two tripods, uh, they're super small, both of them, because I'm shooting very low these days, so I, I know I don't need to uh, have bigger tripods. I have bigger ones at home, can go extremely low with this. That's cool, right? Microphone goes on top of this camera with the 1635 when we're talking, so the sound might be bad currently, but it's it's okay, I guess. I have my knife, the lighter, uh, butane, butane lighter for the sparklers, and my headlamp. 
since you've been traveling for a long while and you always like do minor um, changes, are there things that you took out of your bag and why? Well, you might notice that I don't have any camera straps. Uh, I used to change the uh, original ones to a, a quick release one. And actually, this is what I had in the, our first trip together and back in 2014, uh, because I was still using a strap with a camera. I don't know, this is what people do, right? And um, for some reason, um, probably because of the studio work, the cameras are always on a tripod, so I didn't need a camera strap. And even when we shoot uh, handheld, uh, I don't need it anymore. We used to travel with like either a uh our X0 or GoPro and mm -hmm. uh, and a drone as well. I used to have three or four cameras, including the smaller ones, even more sometimes. And especially because this camera exists, that is the same on the two. Having two cameras to manage is uh, is better, I think, for the the overall amount of pictures I can make in one night. <laughs> Probably in 2018 and 19. Our trips were mostly about uh, documenting. I felt like even at some point, filming the process was more important than the picture itself. Not the case anymore. Uh, this is the priority. I'm really looking for the the picture and have my mind a bit more free space <laughs> to think. My workflow is better. I feel when I just have these two cameras, especially with difficult conditions that we have these days, or uh, the, the whole winter, shooting outdoors in the snow, it was only these two cameras that was fun to manage. Mm -hmm. And these days it's the, the cold, the wind, the water, the mosquitoes, that's enough. We'll see in the next trip. I'll have more cameras, but in my bag it should stay pretty much the same. But of course, there's the other bag too which is not that small okay so i also have this bag so in all of, of my videos and i've been using the same bag it's, it's right there it's the, the the red one it's still very solid and uh, there's not much padding but it means that the bag is, is small it's, it's lightweight <laughs> Part, the tube bag. So it might look a bit messy because we haven't organized it uh, back yet. After, from yesterday? Yeah, from yesterday's shoot. So, this, so we have two pockets. Mm -hmm. In this one we have mainly what goes on top of the tube. So we have feathers. Sparklers. Can you show me one? Sparkler? Yeah. Okay, so this is a ice fountain. This yeah, a long a, one. Something we used. We used only one yesterday. That's the picture. And to go with that, the elastics. Mm -hmm. That we are actually well, put them like this. And this we is to put a feather or exactly or a sparkler. The caps. This will block the light but also create kind of a glow effect at the outer edge. Yeah, white line. Exactly. So do you want to go over some like specific things? No. For the tubes? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be for another video, right? Yeah, we're running late. <laughs>